Hello everyone, and welcome to this unboxing video for Edge of Darkness, a card crafting system game by AEG, which is the similar system from their game Mystic Fail, which was, from what I heard, a game that was made as a proof of concept for that very system, because this is the original designed game for it, and this is a lot bigger. So, I've got the Guildmaster Edition here, which is the Kickstarter Edition with a lot of extra bonuses and everything. So, this is not the version you'll see in stores normally, or if you do, hey, if you want this game, get that version. Also, um, because I'm not going to cram these into another video, I went ahead and got the sleeves and everything for this, because these are tarot-sized cards, and the metal coins. Because this time around, unlike a lot of other games in the past, these were actually a really good price. Jingle, jingle, jingle. Uh, this version came with plastic coins as well, so that will be nice. But this is basically a worker placement card crafting game, as they, they put it. So it's a lot of worker placement based, but you're still modifying your cards by slipping them into one big sleeve or something like that. We'll see when we get inside. Uh, this comes with a lot of extra stuff, like I said, with a whole plastic tower that's kind of a dice tower, but it's for their unique threat system. Not that I know if it's unique or not. Yeah, I don't know. A lot of people claim unique for mechanics and stuff like that. But, oh boy, is this big. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, big. Mm. The bottom is slowly falling. Now, I'm looking forward to this game, in, like most games I regret, honestly, but I like the card crafting system. I just think Mystic Veil vale is honestly too short of a loop and takes far too long for people to wrap their heads around at times. Now, mind you, I haven't tried it with anything but the first expansion, so that might change my opinion. Alright, so first off, we've got a... Thank you, Kickstarter backer, and it's listing the major differences, I think, that are in here. There's a lot of quality of life stuff, not mechanical. There are some cards that are unique to this version, but not too many. So, we've got the rulebook. It's about the same size, if not the same size, as Thunderstone Quest, which I mentioned because it's the same company. In fact, that's the game that really got me into AEG. Not Thunderstone Quest, but original Thunderstone. And then we've got a player's handbook. Okay. Let me take a... Oh, this looks like a story version. Uh, I don't know if it's... If this has campaign version, and if it does, if it's like a lot of other campaign games where it's hey, this is an actual campaign, different branching options, or if it's like Thunderstone Quest is, where it's, this is the intended playthrough to unlock everything, but it's really you're just playing preset scenarios back to back to back to back. As if they were normal games. And then Voiceless Guild. Solo rules. This is something unique to this version. All right, then parts of the board, I think. So we got one board here. Big giant castle. Uh, I don't really know too well what everything is. Again, Kickstarter. Back it, try to forget it. This is one I try to keep up with a little bit because the art was amazing. And then we've got this, which actually goes on top of that other one uh, in terms of the scenery. And then this one, which goes below. Uh, looks like it. You can see the bridge slash reflection in the lake. Oh, it looks like it still also came with its normal tokens. So, we've got two sheets of punch outs here with various different tokens, but I have no clue what any of them are, except maybe that being money. Huh. Yeah. This game has a lot of interesting, unique mechanics. And here's the rest of the game! This is still a really deep box. Oh boy. Well, we gotta start somewhere. How about whatever this is? Looks like just a simple packet of rules references. 
Nothing that I see says stop, do not open, yada yada, or special labeled off stuff like it did for Thunderstone Quest. Yep, just various rule reference cards. There is four that are look like your the various phases. Then another four being icon uh, iconography and scoring, and then another one for solo play. Cool. Those are always nice. Not always helpful, but that differs from game to game. Ah, oh, big block of foam. Wow, yeah, that was just a giant empty cavity. Uh, what is this? Well, it's clearly tissue paper falling apart. But it looks like it might be part of that tower. Oh, no! They're cups! Huh, I was expecting them to be round like they are in the picture, but I'm completely content with this. Seems solid enough. It's always nice, I could just leave those out for games in general. Uh, more cardboard? These look like uh, player boards. Yes, there are four in total now that I can see them. And they are actually indented, so it, they've got spaces for things to actually go. And then this being probably where your general card goes, because um, I think you, I think you still get a guild that is asymmetrical, but I could be wrong. My guess is this is the tower actually. Let's see, a box in a box. Box, box, box. Oh yeah. The, oh no, this is more than just the tower too. This looks like this is the box full of stuff that's special to the Kickstarter. So I'm gonna actually put that aside for now and get to some of the other stuff. So we've got a bag for pulling out the uh, threat cube. Ooh, it's a nice faux leather, so it's nice and smooth. Still fabric on the inside and the letters are raised. Feels very nice. Said threat cubes of various colors. Then we've got a nice thick score pad. Yay. Always nice for plotting stuff out, but I always feel bad using those up. Then we've got some packets of cards, regular cards. I'm just like, where, oh, there it is. Where's the pull tab? Find the clear thing on the clear package. Never fun. Could, could you guys at least add some color to that? Um, so, these all look the same at first glance, but are clearly different to a certain degree. Like, see small arrows on them and everything. Uh, and they are split into A's and B's. There looks to be a little bit more A than B. I don't know. And the other cards of those same size are just these. And they have, they're numbered 1 through 8. I think. No. There is no 2. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what these are. They're all different and different on each side. And we've got stuff with an ellipsis on the back. And this looks like various locations, because from what I recall, you build the city in a different way every game. Like, you could build it the same way potentially, but it's based on random cards and what people would prefer, but yeah, like we've got a Capitol Hall, a Grand Senate, High Council, Bureau of Investigation, and these are mostly art, but there is clearly a difference of iconography at the top. Hunter's Guild Hall, 
And then it just continues with things like Rangers Outpost, War Council, College for Greatness? Hmm. And just more and more stuff like that. Uh, some of these look to be... No, that's Fairgrounds. I thought it was some, like, specific name. Uh, this one is Mill Hollow, just a farm town. And it continues on. Ooh, that's pretty. Treetop hideout. City Park, Courthouse. All the way up to 37, and these are numbered. Interesting. Then we got a bunch of pieces of cardboard, which look to be those same buildings, just in more detail. I'm guessing you play the card in order to get these out, because again, you're kind of constructing the city a different way every time. But like, here's the here's the Capitol Hall, and it's all the same ones, just cardboard and. A lot more mechanical detail on them. Alright, that's kind of cool. Oh boy. Alright, then we've got the card crafting system itself, which is this whole block here. Although it looks like it came with some sleeves to begin with. Because that's clearly all that what those are. So, the card crafting system is a very simplistic thing of just here are cards that are translucent in part that then fit into a sleeve that is its own translucent card part. So some of them are about as blank as can be. In fact, I'm guessing these are the basic ones because they look to have the same icons as the four player boards. But more so they end up like this. Like these look to be all just top sections, but and these are different on the front and back, but these can then slide into a card and they build portions of a card until you have a whole one. And again, they're all different on the front and back. These ones actually use the same... Yes. Okay, so these first few are all the same, just different imagery to the different guild slash player cards. So they look like some starter ones, and then I'm guessing... Since these are like citizen and partition, archie, yeah, and then these are like two different ones. So these look like the basics and starters. And then we've got this giant block making up all the rest. Oh boy. Yeah, I thought that some of these were individual thick ones, and it's like, nope, they're just stuck together in blocks. Oh, here's hoping this doesn't make a giant, giant mess in a few seconds here. But, yeah, if it does, it does. Uh, yeah, because these are very, very slippery. But, yeah, so here's ones that are, like, middle, bottom. Even if they're the same thing in just different locations, which sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. That kind of thing. But, yeah, you can see that it's separating in sections more than actual individual cards. Blackwood Lord. Looks like something out of uh, Demon's Souls. Huh. These do clearly have the same types of numbers you saw on the locations. I don't know if they correspond the same. I also have no clue. Oh! Are these the base, Are these baseline sleeves intended to be... Yeah, I can never remember with Mystic Veil, because I'm not the one who owned it, between both copies that we had in our group. I can't remember if it was, here's a baseline sleeve with stuff printed to it, or if it was, here's a base set of sleeves, put the basic card in here and go from there. But the instructions will say that, because these are all insertable cards and there are just so many of these here like this is as much as it seems to break at every millimeter or two this is all cards this thin the whole stack 
so many. This is one of, if not the only thing that was actually enhanced mechanically from the Kickstarter version. Oh boy, is that so much stuff. I don't even know how I'm going to put that back in there without it getting all over the place. Now onto the Kickstarter exclusive stuff. Starting with the miniatures. Who is surprised? No one who watches my channel. So these are a lot of, basically, I think they're just intended to be pawns of sort. Like I'm not even going to try to pull them out because they seem to be four sets of the same thing. Maybe five. That one's the same. No. Yeah, these are all... There are five trays like this that are all the same models in them. Um, like There are eight different models in here. Each of those being unique, but then it's each of those five trays is the same thing. I... Highly doubt I'll ever get around to painting these because there are basically just pawns, and then there are two unique ones. One of which I know off the top of my head. This one is the first player token, and then the other one I have no idea. Also, the middle section moves around, so it's it is its own thing. And we move on to this box of stuff, which, like I said, seems to be all the Kickstarter extra, or rest of the Kickstarter extra. There was clearly some stuff already. So here's that threat tower. I don't know how, like, this is probably just a glorified dice roller kind of thing, but otherwise I'm assuming you just pull out of a bag. Um, yeah, lots of bits of plastic all put together already for the most part, and it has a tower that goes on top of it, um, which they saw fit to stuff with a lot of things by the looks of it. Yeah. <laughs> All of this was either on top of it or in it. And yes, so this must connect like that-ish. I can do this with one hand. Ha ha! So cubes go in, cubes come out. Then we got colored discs bottoms for the miniatures, because you know. and then plastic tokens for the rest, because this version came with plastic tokens, which I will definitely appreciate. The coins, well I got the metal ones, so say la vie. These look exactly the same as the first ones, except purple, and in fact is a green version, and a white, or a red version. And then, yeah, whatever these icons are meant to be. And that is everything in this. I do have the expansion to be another video, but that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to press that like button. If you think somebody else will enjoy this, please share this video. Either way, you'll help this video get seen more. If you didn't like this video, go ahead and press the dislike button. I won't mind, but please leave a constructive comment as to why. Also, feel free to comment in general, such as if you want to see a detailed overview of this game, Let's Plays, How to Play, or anything along those lines. And if you want to see more like this, be it more unboxing videos, my board game overviews, my painting videos, and anything else that I do on this channel, feel free to subscribe. Regardless, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.